Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, fellow citizens. Varishani, one same kwae. You Zambians amaze me. Nangu ifintu na fikakana, you ask a Zambian, how are you? Ah, fine, fine. Kulishani kunganda, we know, we know. Things are definitely not that easy. Today is the first Thursday of 2024. And I come before you to address the current state of our country, of our nation, and this future. I speak to you today as many of you have several anxieties and worries. As a parent or a guardian, you are preparing to send your children to school this coming week and you do not have enough money to meet the, school, the cost of school fees, boarding fees, to buy school supplies. Even those who do not pay school fees, they are struggling to raise money for transport, for uniforms, for food to ensure that children do not go to school hungry. We are all struggling to live under the high cost of living we today find ourselves with. Food has become a challenge for most of our homes. Zambia has become an extremely hungry country. But do we expect 2024 to be different? Definitely not and reduce the cost of living. How they improve the economy. How they will reduce the fuel prices. And how they will improve the health care situation and the food scarcity. Looking at the economy today, Zambia has become a country where all the privileges are given to transnational corporations, to their friends, while you, our people, are burdened with the increasing utility costs increasing fuel costs. We used to buy a little fuel for about 17 kwacha, but today we are spending almost 30 kwacha per litre. For local businesses, this makes the cost of doing business unbearable. We hear people complaining every day. They are wondering how their families are going to survive. Even mobile money transactions are going to be taxed this year. Ngamuletu me mpi ya kuliba blulu venu kumushi. Umuteku wala sunako. Wala funyamo. If you send 100 kwacha, it will not be just the withdrawing charge but also there will be a tax. So if you want to send 100 kwacha to your relatives and they receive 100 kwacha, go to Meshing this year. Barry told you he would fix it. But instead, Barry is fixing the people that voted for him, not fools. You can see for yourselves. You can hear for yourselves. You can analyze things for yourselves. And you are able to come, up to, your, to come up with your own conclusions. And really, time will tell. And time will soon tell. It is evident that the lies will not stop. It's his culture. It's in his DNA, they say. Our health system is deteriorating. Our hospitals are without medications. People are complaining that it's difficult to access decent health care. Many valuable lives are being lost every day because of poor decisions. Poor decisions by our leaders. But why should we keep them in power in 2026 if they have failed on their own promises. 
When will this nation heal? When will this nation reconcile? When will this nation unite? They have no respect for the laws of this country. They have destroyed our parliament. They have destroyed our judiciary. The executive is in shambles. It has become very tribalistic and very regional. The governing system has weakened. There is a breakdown of order in this society. They are trying so hard to move this country to a de facto one-party dictatorship. <coughs> For us in the political arena, we have closed the year on a very sad note. The liberties that our forefathers struggled for, fought so hard for, were eroded in this year that has passed. The freedoms of assembly, association, and expression were being denied us in the previous year, citing insecurity and security reasons. These security reasons have gone on for two and a half years of this government. The rule of law requires that every decision the government makes, every action the government takes, must have the backing of a law. There must be a law sanctioning that decision, sanctioning that action. There is no law that states that if those in the government feel insecure, then the rights of citizens are suspended. There are procedures for the suspension of citizens' freedoms. And part of this is the declaration of a state of emergency, if there are high levels of insecurity in the country, or there are other emergencies requiring a state of emergency their natural disasters, and so on. But they are clearly laid down procedures and the grounds for declaring a state of emergency. It is not done arbitrarily. The Inspector General of Police has no authority to arbitrarily suspend citizens' enjoyment of fundamental human rights guaranteed by the Constitution and international covenants. This is not the way the rule of law operates. We are entering this year with the hope that these practices of the last two and a half years will come to an end, must come to an end. This is our hope, and we challenge the UPND government this year to listen to the advice that we have given them, that our religious leaders have given them, in their pastoral letters or statements. We hope this government of Mr. Kainde H. Lema will also listen to what the Law Association of Zambia has given them and the various civil society groupings have given them, as well as the ordinary Zambians individually and collectively have given them. Let them stop asking for solutions. We and the people have given them solutions over and over again. Let them stop asking for alternatives, but implement the promises to the Zambian people, the promises they themselves freely gave the Zambian people. The Socialist Party is the alternative government for our people come 2026. Let them stop preaching to the Zambian people to work hard. Zambians have always been working hard. They are working hard. What they need are jobs or capital for their businesses. Let them work hard and fulfill the promises they made to the Zambian people, especially the young people, the youth. They promised them jobs. They promised them all sorts of things. Where are they? When are they coming? If they are on the train, when is the train arriving? 
They have promised free education from primary school to university level. Let them fulfill those promises. For now, let's see real change. Real change in the living conditions of our people. Our democratic space has been shrinking. Many of our people have pointed out the shrinking democratic space. They have voiced their concerns about it. They have cried about it. What we get from the other side is a denial that there are no democratic rights that are shrinking, that have been curtailed. But efforts to shrink the democratic space will take them nowhere. Any curtailment of people's rights usually attracts resistance from the people. The people usually rise up to defend their dignity, to defend their rights. These practices of Mr. Hichlema and his government will backfire. Their efforts to try and perpetuate their stay in power, to try and perpetuate their stealing, will take them nowhere but to wire come 2026. Those that liberated this country united us under the mantra of one Zambia, one nation. One Zambia, one nation. Today, our people are being divided more and more by the current government. The nation had Mr. Hitchlema's utterances to mark the year end at Mulungush International Conference Center. And this new year rally held in Choma, both of which were full of tribal utterances, very divisive utterances, full of hate speech or inciting hatred. What did Mr. Hitchlema expect from those speeches? When you tell your people they were being hacked for speaking their language, they were being hacked for this and that, as a tribe, as people coming from a certain region, what are you trying to tell them? What do you want them to do? How do you want them to feel? To smile? To be happy? To be vengeful? To be hateful of others? If this is not hate speech, what it is? What is it? If this is not tribalism, what is it? If this is not tribalism, what is tribalism? This year, we urge the UPND government to unite our people and not to seek to divide people based on where they come from. This country will always have regions, will always have north and south, will always have east and west. It will always have a center. This country will always have tribes or ethnicities. They will never be wiped out. What is required is to accept this reality and live with it as a God-given factor, which we can't change. And everything that comes from God is good. We should embrace it. We should love it. Even when Mr. Echelema feels threatened, we urge him to refrain from tribalism, to retreat, not to retreat to tribal utterances. Because he does this quite often. Whenever he feels politically threatened, his trench is the tribe. We don't need the tribe to die for this nation to live. This, this nation has to live with the tribes. 
These tribes were created for a purpose. If one has a problem with the tribes, then he must have problems with the creator. One who has no problems with the creator will love the tribes, will love the diversity that this country finds itself in. Even in the Garden of Eden, there were many flowers, many types of plants. There was variety. But that variety was not a source of conflict. It was actually a source of harmony. The Zambian people from all walks of life have been telling this UPND government what needs to be done to address the challenges our people are facing today. The traditional leaders have been telling them what needs to be done. Our religious leaders have been telling them what needs to be done. Our civic leaders have been telling them what needs to be done. The business people of this country have been telling them what needs to be done. And these business people include our women in the markets, our people on the streets. They have all been telling them what needs to be done. Political and economic commentators have been telling them what needs to be done. But they don't seem to listen. It seems like they have put cotton wool in their ears. They are not list ready to listen to anyone else other than to their own inner demons. The socialist part has been emphatic on how to deal with the debt restructuring on how to deal with mining, on how to deal with the growth of the Zambian business, both private and public. But they do not listen. They are not ready to listen. They have not been listening. Tabonfwa, Sivanvela, Abautwi, Bativani Mazeve. They have become very arrogant, extremely arrogant. They know it all. They want to fix it alone. But this arrogance is costing us. This arrogance is dangerous. This arrogance is counterproductive. These people are irredeemable. They are untrainable. They have been on job on training for some time, two and a half years. They are failing to pass the exams. Nangubukopo teifi. Chachine chachilamo. And there is no way someone who is a Christian will tolerate the high levels of corruption we see today. This is the most corrupt government in the history of this country. They don't steal small, they steal big. They don't steal petty cash, they steal capital. <laughs> today, NAPSA, they have looted, they have almost finished the man of NAPSA. Even encouraging NAPSA to invest overseas. Yes. When you, the Zambian people, the owners of that money, you want it for your capital. Mr. Hichilema says the money should be invested abroad. In, in whose companies? Check in whose companies NAPSA is investing or is being told to invest abroad. You will find that it's in their companies, it's in their businesses abroad. That's how crooked these people are. This is how corrupt these people are. There is no true believer in Christ who allow the masses to suffer under these conditions, under these deteriorating economic conditions. The hardships are too hard to bear, are too big to carry. 
But they themselves are getting richer and richer and richer and richer by the day. To a point where they are now even scared to tell you what they own. They can't tell you what they have. They can't tell you what their interests are. They are scared. Because if you know, they will be in trouble. If it was something that you are going to rejoice over, if it was something that was going to make you happy, would they conceal it from you? If it was something that was going to increase your support for them, make you vote for them in 2026, would they conceal it from you? No. no. They know that if they show you, they tell you what they own. Pafita. There is no way the wealth of the people can be stolen and given to foreigners. And you proclaim yourself to be a Christian, a good Christian for that matter, a senior religious leader. Christianity has become a political, a political selling point where somebody is masquerading to be a good Christian and stand for Christian values. How? in the midst of what we are experiencing. Can someone claim to be a serious Christian? A good Christian? Unless Christianity has lost meaning. To be a Christian means to be like Christ. Are they trying to be like Christ? Did Christ encourage greed? Did Christ tolerate corruption? Did Christ tolerate abuses? Did Christ tolerate injustice? Did Christ encourage hunger? What did Christ do when people were ill-clad? He made sure they were treated. They were healed. There were medicines. There was care. There was compassion. The Socialist Party embodies the values of Christianity. It stands for equity, it stands for honesty, it stands for justice, it stands for humility and solidarity. This is what Christ believed in. This is what Christ practiced on this planet. This is what Christianity is all about. Without Equity without honest, without justice, without humility, without solidarity, there can be no love. And without love, there can be no Christianity. Amen. And indeed, I can say without love, there can be no authentic religion at all, of any type. This year, make sure you get your NRC and also make sure you get your voters' card ready. Let us get ready to take them out in 2026. Yes. Join us to change this country for the better. Life can't continue to be this way. We have had our Calvary. Our resurrection must come. We can't continue pushing the border on Calvary. Time for redemption must come. And this time to start the struggle for that redemption is now. Amen. Join the Socialist Party movement for a more just, more fair, more humane, and more peaceful Zambia. Join us to change the way we deal with education. Join us to change the way we deal with health. Join us to change the way we deal with agriculture. Join us to change the way we deal with mining. Help us change who to prioritize. Zambians should come first at all times. This is their country. Given to them by the creator. For them to live better and to worship him in peace. 
our people should benefit from the economy. And the only way our people, or most of our people, can benefit from this economy is by finding jobs in it, by finding gainful employment in it, by being able to run their businesses in it. And the businesses, when we talk about businesses, we talk about small and big. We have no issues with our people becoming millionaires or billionaires. In fact, the Socialist Party in the government will, ask, will help our people to become millionaires and billionaires. We are not petty and will produce more millionaires and billionaires. We are not envious people, but those billionaires will not be us. We have a choice either to be in political leadership or to be in business. Our job is to assist our people who are in business. To create jobs for our people, to create wealth for our country, to improve the living conditions of our people. If we who are in business are competing with our businessmen, what will become of them? We have the whistle, we are the referee, and we are also the players. Who will blow us offside? This is not the way to run an economy. When the key leadership of the country become the richest people, you have difficulties. That's why they have difficulties revealing what they own. They are failing to reveal what they are, still, they are, they are, they are owning, they are running, because they are shortchanging you. They are stealing from you. They are crooking you. We together can industrialize this country, can industrialize this economy, and bring real change to our people. The change the Zambian people need. As we have said before, we cannot do this alone. We need you on board, all of you. Zambia challenges. But as the members say, Infu mushitunguru lafie. Aba teka, aba chitefintu, vantu. Leaders lead. The people govern. We alone cannot do it. We can only do it together. Ngata muivimbi remo. Ama chushi mule pita molelo takapwe. Ifofwe kate tutukwa nishe. We are not MacGyvers. We are not Bari who fix it. Na Bari who are demi paper to fix. Na afirwa e kate tiakwa nishe. This can only be done together. This can only be done collectively. Ngata muivimbi remo. Mufi kansefi achalo. Mumi tekele ya chalo, lawe niko. Magaiva, tamu ataka mwaneke. Bari will not fix anything. We need to struggle together to correct the lies and the false promises they have been making. They are still making. They will continue making. Because without promises, they have nothing to say to you. Every time they open their mouths is promises. <laughs> promises after promises after promises after promises. But what are they delivering? Nothing, nothing, nothing. With the protection and the guidance of our ancestors, those brave Ungoni warriors, under the leadership of Unsingo, who will overcome these challenges, who will win Amen. and create a better nation for ourselves. Amen. I wish you and your families all the best 2024 can give you. I know it's hard. I know it's not easy. 
I know it's difficult. I know it's painful. But please, please, please don't lose hope. Please, please don't give up. A better tomorrow is possible. But we have to struggle for it. If we struggle for it, it will come. With God's guidance, we'll get there. Don't be consumed by negative practices. Don't allow yourself to be consumed by alcohol and other bad things. Remain positive, even in the midst of these challenges. I thank you all. Away!